All right, everybody. It's been a while. I did a live stream a year ago or something like that, and uh, several live steam streams, and it was a great experience contacting you directly, you know, answering the the questions directly. However, I, you know, had so much other things to do that it got a bit uh, deprioritized, I would say. But now I have a new setup and I really want to do a bit more of this live streaming because, you know, there's so many questions, especially in the Facebook group going on. And it's, I try my best to answer these questions in the Facebook group, but writing it down instead of showing it is just a big difference. So what I can do now, just by press of a button, we will switch here to my iPad view and I will be able to answer any question in there. So um, I think this will be fun. So let's do this, shall we? Let's go for the first question here. So thank you very much for joining early and writing down some questions that makes it easier to start a Q&A session here. Um, and there's a very good one already. So you comment on paperless notes under pad OS. Actually, I love it. I love it when I just, you know, go, let's go to this view. Um, when I just switch off and tap here, you see the new dark mode and I love the new dark mode. It is awesome. I love writing it. I also consider releasing a digital journal in dark mode. So if you want to, you know, interested in this as well, I had some conception work, conceptual work already on the 2019 version. So I know it looks great, but I had no time to finish this. And as you know, for those who pre-ordered the 2020 digital journal, um, I'm working hard on it because the release date will be Monday, isn't it? 13th of August. Oh my God. So I'm working day and night to get this finished. But um, bear with me. We will, we will can do this. So maybe there will be a dark mode as well. So let's go back to the Apple Notes. And we can just delete this here write something so it is it is really nice i just love writing uh, white on black or bright on dark and what i also like about the new apple notes app is the the toolbar you can now just just throw it away on the end the corner and you know put it wherever you want to have it and that's something i really like i they also have the options now when you do a screenshot from this for example and you go into the screenshot uh, section here they have this plus icon and now you can I, i'm not sure if it was there before so just correct me if i'm wrong but i never realized it was there you can just add some um, signs in here so if you have anything you want to point out you can simply do this by adding this or you know other shapes you can also increase visibility by just adding a magnifying glass so I really like these features you can also add the assign so you can sign it off you can change the colors of this and I'm not sure if it's saved now yeah it is so now you can, I can add the sign the signature wherever I want wherever I can add text obviously I can uh, the speech bubble so i really like the new the new style going on here uh really nice nice and for those who don't know there is ocr so it recognizes your handwriting as well it was already in the previous version so what i still don't like and i'm you know it's it doesn't matter what note taking app i'm using is the fact that um the highlighter goes uh, the highlighter goes still in front of my writing so there's no point in highlight it's well it's not a good example obviously you know using this let's highlight this way oh no it goes behind i was wrong so it was just because it was white here okay so this is great so i can 
write something and then I can highlight it. Okay, well, that's uh, something great, isn't it? Um, so in general about the um, pet OS, our iPad OS, uh, I like the updates, but I will never ever do again um, install, will install um, I will never ever install again the iPad OS up front. So, you know, like I was just checking, sorry, there was something going on here on my, on my back end. <laughs> sorry. So um, I will never install a beta or beta so early again. Okay, they were right when they wrote, um, if you if you love living on the edge, something like that, I wrote this and you're seeking for the thrill, then install this beta and I thought, oh yeah, come on, I will install it, I will check it out for my people. And um, well, I was so wrong. It wasn't. It was not only the, the iPad OS. Uh, as soon as you install this, really everything crashed. Obviously, because all the apps like NodeShelf and you know even Google apps and so on, they weren't updated yet, so they weren't ready for this new iOS. And uh, but the worst thing that happened to me was when I installed the Watch OS on my Apple Watch. <laughs> Because what happened there is, if you install the watch OS, it means iOS 13 to work, okay? So you were actually able to somehow to install the new watch OS on your iPhone. However, um, you couldn't downgrade it anymore. And it somehow got disconnected from my iPhone and it just completely stopped working. So I was forced to install the beta on my iPhone as well <laughs> and um, in order to get this work again and yeah what shall I say it was a big mess but with each beta coming out there everything is getting smoother and much more um, yeah stable so I'm really excited about the new OS and as you see here what is really nice is that the widgets are now available much faster um, and you know you can sort them by just go here and you can add it to your favorites oh I see I have it in, in German sorry about that so I won't change the language now usually I have it in English but um, yeah and so you can have your favorites on top of it and you will have you know all the feeds going on there that's really nice especially also the note shelf thing so you can go in just tap there to your recent notebooks and just go in here and uh, go th go to the uh, your last used notebook. Oh, by the way, when I see this now, we will get just go to the next question. Oh, Marina S. <laughs> Actually, you are the first top chat who ever. Uh, don't know what to say. I didn't expect that anybody would do this. There's no. Oh, come on, Rhonda. <laughs> I knew. You know, I'm. I'm I'm doing jokes about these people on Twitch and so on and say, oh yeah, give me another one, give me another one, yeah, bring it on. But it's really exciting, you know, because I didn't expect anything like that. So thank you very much, Marina S. Thank you very much, Rhonda. Thanks, Rhonda, for being here since my very first video, by the way. So this is really exciting. Thank you. So um, let's go on then here. I will do my best to make it worth the money. <laughs> um, so here it is it says demo demo and the exciting thing i don't know if you know this already um was that actually node shelf reached out to me the developers and asked me if i want to be featured in their own app so this is really exciting because if you go on it's in german again but if you go to the node shelf club which is which is inside the app you can go to inspirations and in here, once uh, it's loading, uh, I have no internet connection switched on. So just let's reload this. Um, once you go in there, you will see 
come on you see here tom solid's planners is that awesome so i built this planner actually uh, with Node.js in mind, I made it optimized for Node.js because Node.js is my go-to note-taking app still. Um, why this is, we can talk about a bit later, but I got featured in the Node.js note-taking app. I was so honored and excited. So and when you go in here, what you can do, I provided uh, the digital planner. It is the full version, so a fully functional version that everything you get when you buy this is in there as well. And you can download it and use it inside Noshelf just to get uh, check it out if it is working. And the only thing that is different, obviously, is the watermark in front. And if you decide to buy it, then um, you can just press a button here and you get, can go to the external website to buy it. But it works here. So I can tap around here. You know and jump to the different month and that's really exciting and you know starting to work or working on the 2020 journal now since a few weeks um i'm really excited again about the whole digital journaling thing okay so now but now let's get to the questions oh my god i'm just drifting away that's normal when i do the videos i can do cut everything but believe me when i do a 10 minute video it's usually one hour of talking and i'm cutting it together because yeah people complain <laughs> things are too fast or uh, they are too slow or too long i'm not going to the point so yeah and um, that's the difference to life okay so the other one other thing was was from brad cave now the question it was yeah he he's actually building his own digital planner from scratch and um, sorting things for the yeah different pa pages and he realizes how complex the linking is and um, yeah he's asking if there are any tips on this part of the process so Brad I'm not sure if you actually know about my online course where I explain in detail how to build a digital journal Maybe you, you want to just go, I just, I have a button, maybe I'm not sure if this, if this works. Yeah, I just send a link here. And if you go to this uh, link, you will go to this online shop and what you can do there, you can check out the free um, preview views, which shows you already a lot. And um, well, then you can decide if you want to go for the online course, because I show exactly in detail how to build a digital journal in there. Um, just again another product you out there have been asking for um, and that's really exciting so, so giving some tips on on my end just right now um, just let's stay here in the digital journal well when I just went back and, and <laughs> did, did the digital journal 2020 I realized how complex I made all the hyperlinks and so on. And um, yeah, I just finished uh, the video recording, by the way, for all you uh, already bought the online course, you're still waiting for um, the, the video explanation on how to use the template because you are able to buy the online course together with the template. So it's the PowerPoint original template you can download and you can edit. Uh, from this digital journal here and I now finished the video uh, series where I explain in detail how my digital journal works how it is built up and um, how complex it actually is so to answer your question Brad I'm not sure what you actually want to achieve with your digital journal or with your digital planner if it is simply um, some daily journal so you have only days in there it's not that complex so all you would need is like here on the left side a bar where you can jump around from page to page but as soon you have uh, like a monthly view or even a weekly view it becomes really complex and i always recommend and i show this in this online course as well to write everything down to make a mind map uh, somehow to you know think before you start what type of hyperlinks you need and where it needs to point to um, 
because if you just start, that's fine, you know, just to play around and so on. But if you want to get serious, it becomes really serious. And it was the case for me when I built the digital show in 2019. It was the first time I built this and I just started building it. And I, I worked on it for several days and then I realized, okay, the, the foundation of all the thing is wrong. I have to do something else. And that's when I came up using the master slides, which uh, saves so much time. For example, now uh, with the concept I'm using now to build digital journals, it's very easy to just, uh, for example, change the color on these buttons. Because if you build everything on several slides and you just link everything back, if you want to change the color, <laughs> you have to go to each slide again and change the color manually. And while well, I speeded up the process by using master slides, which is like a background you can put on each um, page. Um, so I just have to simply change one button now and it will change it all over the place. So, or for example, the logo on top left, I have a new logo. Um, you realize this. Um, and you know, in order to change this, it's much easier now with, with this concept here. Let's go to the next one. Ah, I have to answer a bit quickly here <laughs> because you're writing. Oh, everybody's writing a lot. So uh, let's go. That was this. Um, this is Rhonda. Yeah, we said already hello here. So uh, yeah, your question, Rhonda, about how to upgrade my digital journal. Just go back to the download link you, you um, were provided uh, with in the first place. It should be uh, possible to download the new newest version there. So this, this download link is always the same. And as soon I update the digital file, you will just get a new version as soon you go to the download link again. So no worries, just go there, download it. However, it is not possible. And I get this question a lot of times. It is not possible to update your existing journal because some people really get confused. The digital journal is just a PDF file. Okay. It's just a PDF file. What makes it so functional and complex are the hyperlinks in there, which makes it interactive and so on. But it, in general, it's a PDF. That's the reason why you can import it into any app that provide that supports PDF files. Um, that's the whole magic behind it. So Rhonda, I'm sorry, you would need to install it and use it from scratch then, or yeah, that's the best way, way to go for. So my favorite is GoodNotes 5. I'm starting a master's degree in October. Timmy, thanks. And it will get a lot of views. Yeah, I'm sure. So people keep asking me, why not GoodNotes 5? Why not Notability? I can tell you when you when you follow my channel, my, my mind was all over the place as well. I started using GoodNotes 4. That was one of my very first videos when I just started using the iPad. I used GoodNotes 4. I showed you all the apps that are uh, good best to combine with GoodNotes 4. But then I found uh, Notes Plus actually, which was back then in November 2017, which was back then. Um, that's actually the video with the fly on my head, if some of you remember. Um, that's when when Notes Plus was very the, the best for me because you could control everything with the Apple Pencil and you could do so many things like striking things through. And then there was Nibu, Nibu from my script. And for those of you who still don't know, Nibu actually are the developers of the handwriting recognition engine. All the other apps use. So um, back then, neither, well, who was it? I think. Good notes, doch, uh, yeah, notability didn't have uh, um, no take uh, handwriting recognition back then. But all of these apps have now handwriting recognition, Noteshelf as well. And I think it's such a very important thing to have because that's the big advantage over having a paper notebook. That's what I say all the time. I loved having a Paper, paper notebook. However, you can make it searchable by writing it down on your iPad. And that makes it so mighty. So you can write in keywords. Um, I, I made this video about um, track your to do's in a handwritten note. So, you know, it's just by adding some text. However, 
That's why I love the Facebook group, by the way. So for all of you coming over here from the Facebook group right now, uh, welcome. And for those of you not being in the Facebook group, just head over and uh, check it out. They are all awesome. Um, in there, I got the answer, ah, you could also add a hashtag and then write the write the notes and it will realize this hashtag. So as soon as you write a hashtag, it's recognized like, you know, ah, <laughs> I have the iPad screen here. So let's just show this. So let's just, you know, jump to some any day here. I hope you don't mind the demo sign here. I just want, don't want to switch pages. So let's write a hashtag test task. Oh, uh, let's switch it off. So I hope it's getting back online again. Is it? Uh -huh. So, you know, that's what I don't like about the DLRs, DSLRs. Um, just give me a sec. I have to disconnect and reconnect. No worries. We will get this back again. I'm sure you still can hear me. That's the most important thing. So now we have the test task here. There we are back and uh, let's go somewhere and just search now for the word test task. So we can just go in here and search for hashtag. Done. So is it working? Okay. So because I, ah, there we go. There we go. And if I tap here, see, it realizes the hashtag. And that's awesome, isn't it? Because he also told me as soon as you strike this through or take it off or whatever, or you can delete it as well, then it stops working. So it doesn't really uh, re uh, recognize the hashtag anymore. And see, it's gone. It doesn't, oh, it re still recognizes it. So, okay, obviously you have to delete it then. Okay, so, but that's a really nice way to keep track of your tasks. Because this way I can just, you know, in a meeting, write down something, make a hashtag in front of it, and he, I know exactly that this sentence isn't a to-do task, task. And if I want to check what my tasks are, I simply have to go in here and search for the hashtag. So that's really nice. Oh, and by the way, um, NodeShelf secretly released now global search as well. So this means you can go back in here and um, search globally through all of your notebooks as well. So yeah, it's even more efficient now. Okay, I'm drifting away again. Uh, can I add your digital channel to Notability? Yes, you can add the digital channel to Notability. However, um, that's why I'm not very happy about Notability recently, because of their customer service. With their latest updates, uh, you know, the update where you can draw better shapes and, you know, the split screen and so on. It's awesome. It's really nice. However, um, it stopped working that you can click on the links of my digital journal with the Apple Pencil. So you have to use your finger for to do in order to do this. So that's why I also like um, NodeShelf because in here you simply go to there. Everything's in, in German. So I think I just switch it now. Um, and what you can actually do here is you can deactivate the well, it's, you know we are on our iPad I can show you in this way so it's this in English as well so deactivate the hyperlinks during writing so um, and this makes it easier to you know to even to use it even better your Apple Pencil and in NodeShelf, they stopped using this. So you have to use your finger now. And it's not so intuitive. When I'm writing, I just want to tip on it and then jump to the other page and so on. As soon as I need to use my fingers, it's not that comfortable. So I reached out to Notability on several channels. Many of you reached out to them and we never received an answer. I tell you what, when I reach out to NodeShelf and I already have a web WhatsApp uh, contact there, where I can just, you know, see a question from you on Facebook and I will send it directly via WhatsApp and I tell you they're in India. So if they're awake, when I'm awake, I get an answer within 
10 minutes. And I can, I promise, when I started using NodeShelf and I made the very first review, and maybe some of you remember the review of NodeShelf too, um, I wasn't very happy. There was, you know, the, most functions weren't there. And um, GoodNotes 4 was so much better back then. But with the input I gave them from the community and all the things where I said, okay, you should focus on this, they did it. They did so many things. Handwriting recognition here, the toolbar on top, um, the hyperlinks working this way. So many things you can swipe in from the left so you have a, a quick access to all your notebooks. It's it's like somehow like the tabs in, in GoodNotes 4. I think many people even don't know this, that you have this function here. So you can even manually add a new notebook here or you can uh, add your favorites in here. So you can swipe in from the right well, that's my calendar. So you can uh, open this here. It's also with swiping. And you have, um, you can tag things, you can bookmark things. So both uh, features are in there. And you can have a PDF outline in the meanwhile. So when you import an ebook, unfortunately, it's not working with mine. Don't know why. And maybe I have to do an update there for the outline. However, it recognizes the links and will give you an outline of the PDF you inserted here. So um, I think that's really amazing how they react to their community and that's why I'm here. Also the idea with the Node Shelfer Club and so on. And that's why I'm happy to be featured on there. And I'm happy to tell you that's, uh, you know, it's just a great note-taking app. And you know, I switch note-taking apps a lot of times and maybe other note-taking apps becoming better because Zoom Notes, for example, Zoom Notes is always in the back of my mind because in general zoom notes has great features you can import videos you can uh, infinite uh, the infinite canvas where you can work on and um, there are so many things you can do with zoom notes and well there's you have to find the things zoom notes can't do however i, I see a lot of people of you using zoom notes as their main note-taking app however um it is it it doesn't feel up to date and i don't like the interface it's not modern and i need when i when i need to you know when i want to use it i want to get inspired i want to be up to date and that's the reason why uh, actually i'm not using zoom notes it might be a stupid reason but that's that's one of my main reasons yeah so it doesn't feel trustworthy just because of the looks it's stupid i know but um, but it's a general thing with note taking apps. Ta talking about trustworthiness, I am also struggling about you know where are my notes actually? Where are they saved? Yeah, you can auto backup backup it to G Drive or whatever, and you can uh, iCloud sync it. So that's fine. Uh, I'm not that worried. But um, is it really that stable? Um, I'm really worried when I'm reading from the community sometimes. Oh, I lost all my notebooks. Well, in general, they got the notebooks back because it was saved somewhere in the iCloud and so on. And when they reach out to the support team, they help to get this back. But um, I think I have to dig a bit deeper here and maybe do a video about it, uh, about security and how, how safe my notes actually are. Because in this case, I say, okay, I can lose my paper notebook or, or my dog could eat it, but... Um, uh, <laughs> and, and for the digital notebooks it's saved in the cloud however what about if it is not syncing properly and so oh, i'm not sure so i think i should i should go deeper into this uh, topic here okay let's let's go further okay so i try good notes but for no jobs okay um Okay, that's a discussion about what is better in the background. Okay, there's a question. Um, if I answered already the, the question, what is better, iPad Pro 11 inch or 12.9 inch? Um, should we wait until September for possible new iPad Pro to buy? Do you have some rumors? Okay, I have no rumors um, because that's an own business, I tell you people on YouTube uh, doing these rumors, um, they're doing, you know, they have the right contacts and they 
doing it on a main ba job basis. So I'm watching these and I'm following these. I'm really interested uh, to see what comes out. I'm, I'm really hyped very easily by the new stuff coming out, but uh, I have no rumors. For the size of the iPad Pro, I bought the iPad Pro 2017 already in 12.9 inch and I bought the iPad Pro 2018 also in 12.9 inch. The reason is because it's about the size of a DNA 4 uh, paper, which was the size of my paper notebook. So I start, thought, okay, when I want to replace my, note, my notebook, my paper notebook, I want to have it actually to feel and look the same size um, as the paper notebook. And that's the reason why I went for the big one. But it's not very mobile, I have to say this. Um, I, I know that the 11 inch is, I know that the 11 inch is a lot more mobile and it's, it's good enough, but I'm happy with the 12.9 inch because I'm also using it for watching videos and so on. And then I'm really happy to use it. And when I'm drawing on it, it's just great. But I tell you, if you uh, when go to my channel, just look for the iPad mini review I made because I bought the new iPad mini 5. The reason is because it had the Apple Pencil support finally. And this is very mobile. And this is what I use to go to the meetings and so on. As it's really something like a little notebook and everything is in there because everything is in sync. When I start writing on there, I just can go to my main notebook or go to my windows um, the laptop and everything is in sync. So uh, that's what I use to be mobile. Okay, so if I would need to decide again, I would go again for the iPad Pro 12.9 and for the iPad mini 5 to have the best combination. For about the size, the storage size, I always go for the smallest one because I actually really save everything in the cloud. Uh, okay. Does anyone let you do links besides OneNote? OneNote, does you are able to add links in OneNote? I mean, on the iPad, this would this is new to me that you can add hyperlinks. But I tell you, this is a very important question you're actually asking there. Let's just search for Cardflow. I made a video about this app here, Cardflow. And what you have in here, you can at least um, right on the canvas but you can uh, it's been a while when I use this uh, it's here isn't it where is it ah press and hold wasn't it double tap press hold and you don't see anything what I'm doing here I'm uh, trying to do card flow uh, test card flow here again I'll show you card flow again ah there we go add card and what you can do in here you can actually add links. Um, I remember this. I'm not sure how it works, to be honest. Ah, here, add link. And then I can link it to other um, cards. So this is something many of you really want to have. So I can, uh, it's, it's, not a bit, it's not that intuitive. Yeah, so there we go. Um, but and then you see the connection here and you can you know build up a kind of mind map that's a really good idea um, and I would love to have this inside my note app as well and I don't know of any note taking apps like notability good notes or note shelf who allows you to actually add hyperlinks you know hyperlinks sending you to YouTube videos or sending you to websites or something like that you need to do use i still need to use evernote notion things like that uh, to make a wiki about the things i want to collect there and well when i you know i have it open here about mind mapping and i'm still looking for the best mind mapping app there's not much out there just okay try hard It's 11 o'clock and I have to, you know, drink a cup of coffee. Um, yeah, there's not much of mind mapping apps. And what I mean by this is intuitive, 
actively writing with your Apple Pencil mind maps, like you would draw. I mean, I know there are many like Graphio 3 and um, all the mind note and uh, no, no, not mind mode. How is it? I have it on here. The margin note. That's really exciting. I think I should do a, a review about this app at some point. But there was one little thing and it was again at a Facebook group. People, uh, one guy shared this think space with me. And um, well, again, like in, in Zoom notes, it isn't looking that modern. However, I looked up this guy and it is one person who designed and developed the whole app. And it is really, really nice to work in here. So you can just, you know, write something down. You can, uh, how does it work again? You can add, well, you can add this in the back. That was not good. So you have a nearly infinite canvas. You have a card box where you can, you know, drag, let's bring it up again. I can just take this and I think, how was it working? Mm, not very prepared. I mean, there are so many apps I'm testing every day. Uh, please, sorry if I don't know all the functions again. Okay, so here we go. I can add, uh, um, post it like this. And I can change the size, obviously, and I can take this and okay, to, uh, to make the size smaller and write something. It is really fluid to write. And as soon as I press OK here, we have a post-it on here. I really love this. And then we can add another one. Um, I have a memory space where I can just take this and put it in here and will be saved in here. And later on, we go somewhere else and we know, oh, OK, this fits into the workflow here. So I can just select this. How was this working? No, that was wrong. OK, take this and bring it in here again. So um, because if you have a really complex um, canvas going on here, that's really nice. And then also how the things link together. OK, you can just get rid of this. Now I can just link this together and link this together. It's really easy to do. And I just discovered this recently. So I will just have a look uh, how everything works. But in my opinion, that's the most intuitive version I found here to use. So I can just, you know, select more things and change it on the go. Um, I really like it. And you can use your Apple Pencil. And you can go online and search for something, doesn't matter what, and take this. Ah, how is it working? Then I ah, press the plus button. And there we go. That's OK. And close it. And there we go. We have now the website. It looks like a screenshot, but it's like in, in Zoom Notes. You know this as well. I think it's in Zoom Notes. Now I can just press on this and open it up again. And I think as soon Bad Red Games, so I'm not sure what I'm <laughs> clicking on there. Um, as soon as soon I change this, I just close it and uh, okay, it's not updated. Or oh, didn't I save it? Not sure. Just open something up. Okay, but you get the idea. So that's really something I I was looking for for uh, an intuitive note take um, mind mapping app. So it's called Think Space. Okay. Okay, let's go on. PDF Expert does. Okay, I just bought an iPad 11. Congratulations, Rhonda. Uh, to the new iPad, and you had a 12 for uh, years. Yeah. Okay, so that's the answers to the questions. Let's go on. I just for the. Uh... Yeah, Tim, 
Timmy Fang, so you bought the, um, the iPad Air 3 and it's not worth the $300. Uh, I agree. If you, well, it depends on what you're using. Everybody will say this to you. Um, if you have any demanding apps and very, you know, like video capturing and so on, then uh, the iPad Pro is really nice. It, it's a beast of a machine. And you can use the new Apple Pencil too. Many people laugh and you know my videos about the Apple Pencil. Uh, I love the Apple Pencil, I still have to point this out, um, but there are alternatives out there. And with the Apple Pencil 1 being available on the other iPads, I think um, it's really great. Doesn't matter what iPad you get. There are so many different, uh, so tiny differences between them when it comes down to performance. For example, the iPad mini 5. I was really thinking, okay, can I keep up with my iPad Pro? But uh, I nearly, I mean, I very pick, I'm very picky in this. So I feel a difference, okay? There's a bit of a, it's not that fast opening apps and so on, but I know most people don't mind waiting uh, 10 milliseconds longer than I do. Um, so yeah, uh, totally fine. But there's no 12.9 inch iPad Air, isn't it? So it's uh, about the screen size as well, isn't it? Okay, so you're welcome, Brad. So any new questions? I love the iPad mini 5. Yeah, hope Douglas, I just said it and nice to have another iPad mini 5 user. Um, I use iThoughts for mind mapping. Yeah, I tested all of these, but again, it's, please correct me if I'm wrong, but iThoughts as well, you, you have to, you know, manually, how shall I describe it? It's too clunky, it's not intuitive enough. I want to have something like I showed you before, you know, standing on a wall, having the post-its, put it on, a, on the wall, dragging it around or on a whiteboard, and then you're connecting these things on there. This is intuitive because my brain just goes much faster when I'm not uh, distracted by... Yeah, it sounds stupid as a techie as I am, um, but I don't want to be distracted by open a menu, adding some styles, blah, blah, blah. No, no. For brainstorming and mind mapping, it has to be fluid. And uh, I think ThinkSpace is doing a great job here. That's also the reason why I'm still writing handwriting I'm not very uh, I'm not a very good handwriter so my my writing looks it's, it doesn't look good because I'm a really you know right it's not fast enough I'm so fast typing so I really get ah uh, so um, but when I have to do mind things and sitting in a meeting and I write it down I can just keep it better in mind and if you bought the ebook um, and you read the ebook you know the my ebook paper is no taking like a pro and there's a chapter where i actually also explain why it is better to handwrite to keep things and learn things instead of typing it down it's simply um simple speaking there's much more in the ebook but it's about um the pictures you have in front of you when you're typing you always see the same font and you know, you don't see a picture in the end. When you're writing and you're doing that note-taking, that's the reason why there's such a hype behind the note-taking apps, because you, you know, you can make it so individual each side that you don't even have to look it up again to know what is written on there. But if you have like a book on each side, the same text, it doesn't matter what side you open, you just have to start to read in order to understand what is on there. So that's the reason why also in my digital journal, many people ask, what is on uh, this here on the top? This is actually a space where I can make sketch notes. So that's a whole own way to make notes or to take notes is sketch note taking. So like, I mean, if I have this like it is here and I just make a smiley on here and um, maybe with the red thing on the side, I will remember this side. I will always remember this. Um, it will be easy when I go in here, whatever I have written down there, as soon as I go back on this day and I see this sketch, I remember instantly what I have written on there. Okay. Anyone use liquid text for PDF editing? I like it better than PDF expert. 
Liquid Text and Margin Note, they are both awesome apps, really. When I was uh, doing my PhD, I would have loved to have an iPad Pro. <laughs> but the, back then, the, the first iPad was released, the very first iPad. And this wasn't something you use for, you know, proper taking notes or studies. Um, but when, when the iPad Pro, the new one, or the since 2007 actually, the 17, when the Apple Pencil 1 was released and I, I felt the first time how fluid everything is and how good it is writing with it, um, I would have loved to study with this. And I'm sure my grades would have been much better because I had to do so much research with all the different papers going on. If you use apps like Liquid Text or Margin Note, where you can, well, I can just, I'm not sure if I can show you something. Um, for example, liquid text, and let's just open my recent paper. Where is it? Uh, sample document, for example. So there you go. For those who don't know liquid text, you can import your PDF. So let's say a, a scientific paper, and then you can shrink it like this, okay, and extend it. And you can go there and just make this and this. So this means you can focus on the parts that are really important in this uh, in this PDF file. So I understand totally when you say it's better than PDF Expert because PDF Expert doesn't uh, doesn't offer this. And then what you can do is you can uh, text select things. Let's select things. Okay. Select the text and then make an auto excerpt. And now you have it on here. It's like a, a mind map in here. And it doesn't matter where you go. Now you have the phrase here and you just tap on there and you will jump to the section where this part is from. So that's really nice. And you have on the other side a big, 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 huge canvas that you can use to take your notes and make mind mapping. And then again, you can just take this and it goes away that's the reason why it's liquid text because it, you can merge it and then you know these are completely different text sections in the whole text but it is collected in a way that makes it easy to study with it and margin note is doing something equal now you can even upload videos in margin note and make a really great um, mind mapping section here so it is actually an awesome mind mapping app as well. However, again, if I would use complex scientific papers, if I would import a complex ebook or, you know, I want to make research on books or something like that, or I might want to make a summary of a book, something like that, then this is really awesome uh, to use. And obviously it's much better to use for this purpose than PDF expert. PDF Expert, on the other hand, I'm using for, for example, when I make online courses and they provide some workbooks, then I will import it into PDF Expert or and actually in my note shelf um, where I can just fill out these things and my handwriting becomes searchable and it just feels more like having the actual piece of paper in front of me and filling it out. So you see, for, for so many different um, purposes you have different apps obviously okie dokie let's see oh god you're writing so much so fast it's so awesome um by the way uh if you want to have a look at the ebook okay it's not working oh or did i send it now several times i have a button here where i can just send over some links so this is the link to to the ebook if you're interested in um Okay, and my battery is running empty. I'm very well prepared here. <laughs> okay, let's see. Brett. Okay, oh, that's explained already. Uh, yeah, people coming back to notability. That's correct. Yeah, I, I actually really like the writing in notability as well. 
And one major feature they published was the split screen where you can just have two notebooks next to each other like you would like you have here in liquid text but uh, that you really have your own notebooks next to each other. And good notes five also offered this now so I'm just waiting for the feature to be released in NodeShop. I'm sure they will come up with something equal as well. Yeah, master slides are time seven, so we are already here in the digital channel talking. I'm I'm talking too long and looking too not enough in the chat here. Hey John, do you know why notability don't fix the <laughs> the highlighter tool? I don't know. I don't know. I that's because they are not listening. That's the thing. That's they are not listening. I show talking no my iPad is switching off. No, it's still there, okay. Because I want to show you this. That's another thing. Um, talking about highlighters. Let's write test. We are in node sharp now. I'm highlighting this. It's already in the back, yeah? So what I can do now, I can select the highlight and drag it around. And it will stay in back. You see how it's flipping uh, to the back? So when I'm dragging it around, this is how it looks in Notability. And that's what people keep complaining. That's what I keep complaining. And this is how it looks in there and in GoodNotes. And now the advantage over GoodNotes, and I don't know if you realize this, that the eraser is erasing everything. Okay, so let's undo this. But now you can just tap twice on there and you have an options menu. And now you can say, delete the whole strike. That's what you can do in uh, GoodNotes as well. So now the strike is gone. Uh, what is now going on? It's still a beta. Uh, that's really annoying. Ah, no, no, it was my fault because you can actually have a setting in NodeShelf when soon you go uh, onto the eraser and you delete something and you release your uh, Apple Pencil, you can start writing without changing the tool. So it just jumps back to the last tool used. Okay, let's do un undo this. And for the eraser, there's also only delete the highlighter. And that's awesome because now I'm able to make it a bit more visible. I will just go this. Now I'm able See, to get rid of the highlighter behind the text, and I'm sure many of you are annoyed as soon you have the highlight in back, the, 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 the last thing you can do, the least thing you can do is just drag it away and delete it, something like that. This is really a good uh, update as well. Okay, so what else? I still like OneNote the best, tried them all. Yeah, I, I, I keep coming back to OneNote to test it, and I think, okay, the, it would be great to have it, especially as I'm a Windows user as well. On my, you know, on the desktop, I'm still using Windows. I'm not a Mac user in this case. I have a, a MacBook Air now, uh, the new one as well. Uh, I like it, but for my real work, what I have to do for my videos and so on, I'm using Windows. And I need apps that integrate well. And that's what I keep praying about or preaching about, not praying, <laughs> preaching. I'm praying sometimes as well that there is an app that integrates well. Um, like Todoist, for example, that's the best example. You have Todoist as a web application. You have it as software, you have it as an iOS app, you have an Android app, and you can access your tasks from all over the place. And there are people, they love Things 3 as a task manager, for example. But it's nothing for me because Things 3 is Apple-based. So you only have it available on Mac OS or on iOS, and therefore um, it's no option for me. So uh, now I lost the thing. There was the, ah yeah, OneNote. I thought, okay, OneNote would be great, but I'm using Evernote already. I'm using Notion. They're integrating so good. And while well, I know Evernote is really bad when you, it comes using Apple Pencil and writing something in there. And Notion is even worse because there is no support at all. But OneNote on iPadOS uh, or on iOS 
is not as good because there are several functions not available as well. I think it is even handwriting recognition. I don't know if they changed it in the meanwhile, but the last time I used it, there was no handwriting recognition in OneNote. Uh, on the iPad, as soon you transfer it to your Windows and so on, it's fine. But to be honest, I'm using um, the G Suite. I'm using all over Google, again, for the integration for, you know, access it from your browser. I know you can access now with Office 365 also all your apps, but I I don't know. Um, Google is just a company, you know, they have all these integrations, the, the extensions, and you can share it so easily with each other and work on, on files that they're really getting the edge on, on all these apps. So I also use uh, Google Keep, the note taking app uh, but it's a whole other story okay so that's the reason i i'm not using OneNote, but i know many who are very happy using OneNote. ah uh, <laughs> and one major reason why i'm not using OneNote, and many asking for it is you can't use my digital journal in there okay it doesn't allow you to import pdf files with hyperlinks. So tell me if I'm wrong, but uh, on the iPad, I can't import PDF files into OneNote and use it um, like the digital journal in here. That's one of the, of, the mo of the most important reasons, obviously. Okay, so it's nearly one hour now. So thanks for staying with me that long. Uh, that's really awesome. And please let me know if we should just repeat this session or maybe you want to have a session about something else. Oh, movie recording has been stopped. I was accidentally recording a movie, obviously. So since when is this on there? No, okay. Um, so please let me know if we should talk about something else. You know, the, the title of this thumbnail or of this live stream was obviously what is the best note taking app. I told you, in my opinion, for my use, daily use, I use NoteShelf 2 uh, because I'm really um, inspired by them. I have really great contact and um, it is, they, they are just growing so fast uh, in, in features. I have to go back to GoodNotes 5 though to have another look because when they released the GoodNotes 5 it wasn't ready yet. Everybody was complaining. Um, I really liked the stability, always liked the stability of GoodNotes 4. It, it felt so stable but um, I have to have a look, another look there I guess. Um, so yeah, let me know if we should do another live stream session about, for example, task manager or maybe, you know, time management, what calendar tips and tricks, something like that. Maybe you're interested in this. It's not all going paperless. It's not only about note taking apps. I hope you understand this. And oh, I'm so excited. I don't know if you can, now. Uh, you can't, you see it. Um, I still have the Raven scanner there the new scanner they sent to me from Texas and I tested it and I showed you already an unboxing video is is really nice and they released some more software updates but to give you a proper comparison I just received the new iX1500 so the you know the the next version of the iX500 from Fujitsu uh, the the scanner everybody has who wants to have a, a professional scanner and I didn't unbox the ScanSnap iX1500 yet, but I'm already very excited to get the comparison done because I think you will be surprised. And I was surprised going to Amazon and looking actually on the ScanSnap how bad the reviews are. So let's see how this works out and let's see if the Raven Scanner is something we really have a good alternative there. Uh, I'm really excited to find this out. Okay. Yeah, Brad Cave, you, you ask as well if you, if I think if Nodeshelf ever will add uh, editable hyperlinks. Believe me, I constantly keep sending the messages that we want this because this would just bring them over the edge. They would just, <coughs> sorry, I have to. Maybe coffee is not the best <laughs> for a sore throat. But uh, it, 
makes keeps me awake then um yeah i tell you when they add hyperlinks and you can actually start building up complex links i mean when i when i would build such an app i think uh, one of the most important things would be adding hyperlinks and then going a step further as soon i add all these hyperlinks obviously i build up a map like a mind map and there must be a way to visualize this like i showed you a liquid text um, it's more or less the same however i have it in my head i don't know yet how to write this down and uh, i really hope with going uh, going with the paperless movement and all of you out there that we will get to a point where we can really create awesome stuff and we have also the uh, you know the financial thing to to start something that changes it or support these companies like i support nochev i'm telling everybody i'm using nochev because i like it for uh, example as well paper like i'm telling everybody put paper like on your ipad um, and i get commission for it yeah i get commission for it but i you know i don't feel bad because the big difference and i told you this in another video already the big difference is they don't ask me could we pay you that you say this and this i'm testing products and if i feel they're really great and i i use them on my own on a daily basis and i really recommend this then i reach out to these companies and ask if there is a way you know like an affiliate link or you know getting commission or something like that um if they can set up something i don't think it's it's so bad because I'm recommending you something that I really use and not, you know, like the many influencers, you know, holding in, uh, for example, like it would be the same, uh, you know, sh I'm talking about noting apps and then all of a sudden I'm doing this. Okay. That's maybe a bad example. Like I'm doing this and then I just say, oh, this thing was recorded with my, uh, what is it? The HD 60 as the, the new stream recording so I can make the stream and so on. So no context at all. So that's not something I can recommend you uh, hardware and things what I use for filming because one year of trial and error, try and error. Um, you know, I had so many different cameras, lightning and so on. And it's the same with the note taking apps. You, if you follow me, you know, I tested all of them and I have a pin opinion on all of them. And that's the same with, uh, products I really like. So I, I'm happy to recommend it and I'm happy if I get money for it because then I can buy new stuff. And I really want to get a point where I can also buy a Microsoft surface just for comparison reasons to really get much more uh, idea or much better idea if it is comparable in which case it is better to use and things like that and the first thing i did um with the money i get from you by buying my digital shell and my ebook was for example buying the scansnap ix 1500 so i can do a proper comparison with this other scanner and if you've watched my last video i was talking about the new website i'm building here um, which is very exciting because I can show you a little sneak peek. Uh, there's a demo website where it shows shows all the functions and this is now really, if you're still there, please don't leave because I really want to get this, um, this information from you if you like this, what we are doing here. Let's see, where is it? Try demo sandbox i can i can actually uh, share my desktop as well okay there we go and those of you who follow me so you can see here that's my live stream <laughs> and here i can see that 48 of you are still here that's awesome um okay so I'm building a new website and actually the exciting thing is I decided not to build it on my own. You know, I was building, you, if you know my website, it is already very complex and I learned everything from scratch, from scratch, the programming, the HTML, 
using WordPress, everything. I used so many different providers, hosts and so on. But I want to focus creating content for you out there. And I said, I want to build up this community, the clo behind closed doors, where we will have an awesome forum going on and there will be online courses included and everything behind closed doors just for the paperless movement. So we really feel special being there. Um, and I thought, you know me, I want to have high quality, the highest quality we can get. And in order to do this, I took some money, actually a lot of money and said, okay, I will pay an agency to build this website from scratch in the thing I want to have it. Uh, so we will feel really awesome in there and things like this. And this is actually the demo, the demo side where you can just see how this would look like. So just imagine it is a uh, different colors and you know, with my logo and so on, but in general, it functions the same way. So you will have a live uh, uh, um, info feed. It's more or less, less more or less like a uh, Facebook, but with a uh, forum integration. So you will be able to have groups. And I imagine there will be a um, task manager group. There will be a time management group. There will be groups for the different note-taking apps and people can exchange, but it will be really focused. So you will have the chance to talk with people who are actually using these apps and it will be collected in there. So for other people who come in, they will get all the information. But there will also be, and this is the most important thing that, uh, the other important thing, to have these courses. So I will do all the online courses in the future I will do. I will bring in here and they will be for free. As soon as you have this membership, you're in there, they will all be free. So you go in this course, then you see what this is. You have a nice preview of this course and then you can start a course obviously. And then you have this here. Yeah, so you can check out the different courses, mark complete, you see your progress going on and then you get achievements. Um, so many things. I just want to, I don't want to go too deep into all this, but you will be able to make friendships and there will be a forum where we can collect all the information, wikis, how to use this and so on. And my main goal is when you enter this uh, website, that there will be a roadmap, a roadmap to help you to go paperless. Okay. So uh, it's really important to me I, th I thought about many different options, um, how different options, how I can do this best. How can I provide you the best value and the information you need to go paperless? And it's not, a, as I said, not only about note taking apps, I'm completely paperless. It's not because I'm using note taking apps. It's because everything is set up in different workflows, automations and so on. And I always have in my head, I have to spread the word and, and tell other people about it because I know there are many who want to know this as well. And that's the reason why I started this first online course showing you how to build a digital journal. However, I had to host another platform to do this. So now it's all over the place. We have this online shop, we have the website, we have YouTube, we have Facebook, we have, um, and we have this online course website. And I want to consolidate everything in one thing and, you know, for, for a place where we can just go back to, to the papers at home. So I think I will stop here uh, <laughs> because I start hyping, but I would really recommend, uh, I would appreciate it if, you follow this along and I will reach out to you asking, would you like this? And I also will do a closed beta and everything where you will have the chance to help in a, in a more personal way. I also planning like this, like a live stream that there will be a closed, closed, uh, uh, mastermind group and so on where we can meet. And then, you know, we can really go deep in, in all the details here. Okay, sorry for the rant. No, it wasn't a rant, isn't it? It was a promotion. No, no, not really. But I tell you, I'm excited at the point where once this is released and I'm, I don't mind, you know, I know that not many of you don't want to come to this membership site. I don't mind. You will get all this, what you're used to. You will still have access. You will get new YouTube videos and so on. No worries. But I will be able in my future videos, as soon as this membership site is launched, 
that I can say in the beginning hi everybody this is the paperless movement or something like that or welcome to my channel and this channel is sponsored by the paperless movement this this will be really exciting I don't want to you know make the the start and say oh and this video is sponsored by whatever a gate or how you call this yeah I want to say this is sponsored by you by you the members of the paperless movement community you will be able to to you know give the the um, help me to build this and to maintain all this okay Sorry about that. I just wanted to to let you know it's a really it's really important to me. I think I'm really excited about all this. <laughs> ah, okay. Now I just see. Okay. Oh, um, and if you want to sign up to the waiting list or you want to go into, um. To the waiting list or you want to have the chance to get in a closed beta and all the information then please go over to this website i just posted here and uh, make the survey because in the survey you can tell me already if you like it what you expect what you're afraid of and this will really help me and the agency to build a website really so we all uh, love to use it and then you can sign up there for the waiting list so already 200 people signed up to the waiting list it's so amazing i can't wait to to you know get this thing started and to work with you together on on change the world actually in my opinion it's, it's changing the world because we all adapt to a complete new way to to live it is so exciting times i remember the time when i had the, the game boy from a friend actually because i never had one on my own um and this was already amazing and you look at the uh, resolution and so on and now you have all of these things going on vr and everything um, okay i have to stop i have to focus again on the chat i'm so sorry uh let's see there we are When is your digital channel ready for download, please? I'm working hard on it and I hope it will be released on Monday. I really do my best that it will be the case. You can drag and drop with I thoughts, plain and simple. So I really have to I really have to look into this again. I will just make a note. I will have another look at I thoughts. Yeah, Microsoft Office has whiteboard, which is very good. I tested it. I actually still have it on here. Um, let's go in here. And I really like it, actually. Yeah. Now I did. No, there it is. Yeah. Microsoft whiteboard. That's something um, I want to see more. Apps like this, where you can just simply. And the exciting thing, yeah, I remember. Is that you can actually add where was it what do i need to draw it i'm not sure uh not sure how it works but you can add as you can see here you can actually add a table and so on so yeah that's correct i i like this one too that's just Okay, I will have a look. I just recently downloaded it. Um, ah, ink to table. How, how did I actually make this? I already forgot again. And I also like um, the ruler. I, I think a ruler should be more present in the note taking apps as well. There's a ruler in Zoom notes, different rulers actually, but um, no ruler and notability or note shelf and so on. I think it's really a nice thing. You have a ruler in um, Apple Notes as well. So that's something I really like. Okay, so let's let's go on.
Which of the note-taking app has the best writing pen in your opinion? Best look of your handwriting? What's the real? Okay. To be honest, I always felt it looked the best in Notability. I'm honest with you. However, in Notechef 2, and somebody else from you mentioned it before, the fountain pen is really nice in there. Um, it, re it looks great in there as well. Uh, as I said, I have a really bad handwriting, so <laughs> there is not really a pen who makes that much better. But in, in Notability, it looks great. However, you get much more options in Notechef much more options than you have on in Notability or in GoodNotes, but you get even more options in ZoomNotes. However, the handwriting feeling is not that great. Like in Notes Plus, you can really change the the whole thing, you know, even like how you're holding your pen and so on, it will just look different ways, but um, it feels clunky, in my opinion. It doesn't feel that fluid. And it's the most important thing that it feels as natural as possible when I go on my iPad and start writing. So in my opinion, Notechef 2 uh, meets all of these or checks all of the boxes. Okay. So if I miss any questions, just please uh, write it again or go to the Facebook group and write it in there because um, do I have? Um, I will be able to answer there later on. Yeah, Mark Wendrich. Is, is that a German name? Sorry about that. <laughs> but Wendrich. So Mark uh, and Mark with K. However, you wrote... Um, I'm interested in scanners for becoming more paperless. Yeah, we will definitely talk more about this. I also planned to do a video about, you know, comparison between the scanner apps and the proper scanner. Is it really worth uh, to spend three or five hundred dollars for a scanner when you can get an app for free? So I want to do more on this and it's, I'm happy to see that you're interested in it. Does Paperlite cause any reduction in screen res resolution? Yes, I recommend Paperlite, but I always also say the flaws with it. And that's the thing um, where many people complain that when you apply the Paperlite, that the screen resolution is reduced. It's actually not a resolution. It is a bit like, how do you say it? it it's, it's called the rainbow effect or something like that. When you work with it one or two days, I don't realize it when I have it done there. What I realize is when I take off the paper like and I want to start to write, then I can't use my iPad. I simply can't use my iPad without a paper like anymore because two things, you get the friction that gives you more control over the pen and it will be much easier for your palm to slide over your iPad. And with the, with the glass, you will just stick on a glass. It doesn't feel, it just feels bad in my opinion. And so this weighs up for the screen resolution. However, it's really minimal. And if you talk to any artists, they all say you have to get a mud screen protector. And here's a little sneak peek. I know this will excite you. I'm in close contact to the developer of Paperlike. And I got something here. Let's see. I just got it in my post. Okay. It's a new version. A new version of Paperlike. He optimized it. He was listening. He did his best to optimize it. And I will do a review on it, I will proper review it and we'll see if it is really the next best thing to get because the paper like is already awesome. And, you know, I don't mind about this bit of resolution. However, it seems he worked on it that it becomes much better now with the new version. Let's, let's see how this works out.
Okay, just reading the chat here. It's awesome how engaged you all are. That's, it feels so awesome having you. Okay, I just read hi chat and Tom I love the show. Thank you very much. I love you too. Just wondering if the ratings on the apps on your site are current. Known Shelf 2 has the highest rating so far at 9.5 out of 10. And yeah, I'm checking it every every now and then. And as I said, there's a new website built in the background, which is planned to be released in November. And I have so many things to do for the paperless movement, like, you know, getting out the digital journal, finishing the online course for the digital journal, the people still waiting for this. Um, but finishing it is, it is ready there. You can learn how to use the digital journal. It's just how to use the template and so on. And um, updating the ebook. That's the, that's the most important thing. People who bought the ebook, I promise they get lifetime updates, but who cares about lifetime updates if there are no updates coming? So that will be also something on my list to update the ebook, especially the section about the note-taking apps, because as I said, so many note-taking apps got so many updates. Um, this is on my list. Then, you know, managing all the creation of the new website coming up there. And maybe some of you don't know, I have a hundred and even sometimes 120% day job. I'm fully engaged in a day job and I don't want, you know, lose uh, motivation and so on. I want to be there present and help there out as well, as good as I can. And this makes it really hard. And don't forget, I also have a wife and three little girls. I need to get the time for them as well. So it's really hard for me to get everything in one place. Um, so bear with me, everything will get updated, but at a lower pace. I also think about, you know, contacting people. I'm still a one man show, but there are so many things I'm doing every day. Maybe I could get some help from someone who could help me out. This would make things much easier. So, but in this regards, yeah, Note Shelf is still for me the number one. And I'm following Good Notes 5 and Notability closely. So we will see how everything uh, develops. Yeah, Zoom Notes has some pretty incredible features though. In, uh, indeed, yeah, really. Uh, I, I, I wish them that they would upgrade it to a new look. Like, you know, Note Shelf was the same thing. They had the version one from NodeShelf since the beginning, I think since the iPad one was released. But at some point you get at, you know, with the new iOS updates, you can't use the features anymore. As a developer, you're not able to implement these new features um, because your structure, the, you know, the, the basics of your app is just not right. So you have to start from scratch. And that's the reason why we got NodeShelf 2. And that's the reason why we got GoodNotes 5. So they are future proof now. And I'm afraid if Zoom Notes keeps doing this and doesn't build something in the background to release it from scratch, implementing these features again, I don't know if, if uh, you know, they can keep adding features like others do just simply. Maybe you have to do the initial work and start a new app with the knowledge you learn from the app before, instead of keeping, you know, riding a dead horse. Well, that was too hard. It's not a dead horse. Many people use Zoom notes and it's working great. But, you know, still thought, thinking about the future here. Do you know if GoodNotes or Dodobili will ever add the feature to add new lines in the middle? Yeah, that's another feature people really want. So OneNote, yeah, can do it. And Apple Notes. You can also use Apple Notes to add new lines in between. So that's actually a good thing. However, um, it's not that easy because you have to think Apple Notes and OneNote, they have a more or less infinite canvas or big canvas where you can just add uh, space. Good Notes and NodeShelf, on the other hand, 
they have fixed um, page sizes so you are able to print it properly that's more more for these purposes or make pdfs out of it so i don't know if it is you know adding space in between doesn't help that much so you rather um you know select it drag it a bit down and make some space this way so that's the main reason why there is no spreading node shaft 2 is the new node shaft just to say yeah tim 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 mestre mestre i can say it i'm german it's a and ö if it is german but um yeah node shelf 2 is no longer node shelf 2 it is node shelf now i had to get used to it and i had to get used from green to blue icon i actually like the green icon now it looks just like every other icon they quit the version 1 and renamed the version 2 yeah and it's good for them to do so uh you know nobody i think is using version 1 anymore anymore however it was good to keep version 1 in place to have a transition phase and until they get up to speed so they can offer all the features the old version was available to <coughs> i'm also sure that uh, good notes 5 will be the same that good notes 4 is is it already gone i'm not sure So yeah, that is okay. Wow, Nochev has great handwriting. Just tried it out. Oh, you just tried it out. By the way, I have the link here as well for Nochev too. If you want to try it out, it's not for free. Uh, I have no promotion code here. It is an affiliate link, but um, there is no promotion. But if you, you know, I could reach out to them and ask if I could make a. Uh, competition or something like this it would be fun did they remove the two okay so oh and i'm gone again yay press the button this is this with the dslr cameras i don't know why they you know just shut down and so on maybe they're getting hot all right everybody so we are here one and a half hours of me talking i love talking i love talking especially to you guys and girls out there it was awesome it was an awesome experience uh, it was so much more fun than we had one year ago i, I it was already great uh, but the the sound wasn't working i hope everything was fine you understood me well you the quality of the video was good enough so i actually have a real camera now not a webcam or something like this so i really want to provide you the quality you are used to and uh, with each video i keep working on improving and thanks to your feedback even if the feedback is uh, at some point really hard to take and uh, i don't like feedbacks where you know just you know somebody says you're an Id idiot or something like that that doesn't help yeah okay if i'm an idiot that's fine that's your opinion but then tell me why why am i an idiot oh and one thing there was there was you know about uh, the videos i made about um the crayon where I actually said crying all the time. I'm, I'm trying to keep, you know, getting better in English as well. But um, they're, they're, on this video, many said I would say Epi, Epi Pencil or something like that. Like E double P I, not Apple Pencil. So one last question, okay? I say three numbers and after each number, I pro will try to pronounce Apple Pencil in different ways. And then you write into the chat which number was as close as possible that you understand apple pencil okay so let's do this now so one apple pencil two apple pencil <laughs> or three apple pencil Wait, pencil i think the pencil is bad but then you said apple so i have no idea how to pronounce it right then okay it was fun I love you all. We keep in touch. Go over to the Facebook group if you have any further questions. And uh, number five. <laughs> High five, man. And uh, we will see you soon. Have a good time.